Good evening, Milwaukee. It is time once again for WMSC's Local Live. It is Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Uh, you know when you tune into WMSC, you're going to hear a great local guest every week. Uh, we do our best to mix it up and bring you something relevant, new, and uh, something you might have not ever heard before. Um or we'll hear in a different light. So tonight, I'm flying solo, Cal. I hope you feel better. There is, you know, the usual germ fest going around in the winter. It all starts in October, so heal up real quick if you're listening in. Uh, tonight, our guest, we have um, the founder of Radio Graffiti and also um, the gentleman otherwise known as Black Lines, Din Sky, Tyler St. Clair. Uh, if you're not familiar with Radio Graffiti, it's a local record label which has released music from artists such as Stage Diver, Luxie, The Demix, and Null Sleep. Um, so St. Clair has pretty much, you know, been, you know, making that thing go around for quite some time. And he also has performed frequently for the Milwaukee Electronic and Experimental Music Series, a.k.a. Melt. He has a uh, event of his own coming up that he put together. It's a label showcase called Caution, and uh, it's taking place on November 9th at Club Garibaldi's. It features DJ Dormouse, who's now based in Florida, Null Sleep, who I mentioned before. He's from New York, the Demix and CCDM from Chicago, Hot Science from Milwaukee, and um, Skip Donkers, so... It's going to be quite the lineup if you're a big fan of electronic-based music. Um, I highly recommend checking this out. Um, I'm really excited to have um, Black Lines Den Sky here. The first release was in 2017. It was the Misery Dev EP. There's a plan to release a full length of the same name. And um, I don't know, man. It's just one of those things. Milwaukee has had such a long history of electronic based music DJs, beat makers, mixologists um, have always been a part of the fabric of the music scene here they just kind of tend to float on the underground a little bit um, but when they do pop up to the surface of our common knowledge here they just always impress um, so I'm really excited to give Black Lines Din Sky some airtime first let's make uh, known those who make local live each and every week possible for us our uh, friends over at Club Garibaldi's will be right back with music from Black Lines Din Sky in just one moment. <laughs> WMSE's Local Live is supported by Club Garibaldi. Located at 2501 South Superior Street in Bayview. Open seven days a week, Club Garibaldi serves burgers, hot wings, and more. And features live music weekly. For more information and Club Garibaldi's live music events, visit clubgaribaldi.com. Thank you, Club Garibaldi's, for your support of Local Live and WMSE programming. And now, live from the Bob and Jeannie Freeman Live Performance Studios, I bring you Black Lines, Din Sky on WMSE. I was like, hey, don't stop me, you know? And yeah. at that point, you can look back at it objectively now. Yeah, no, no. And it, you know, with memories, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We see each other, we're not talking, you know, we've been seeing a lot of each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we talked about, you know, didn't we have fun in Hamburg or remember that, all well, that kind of stuff. So it's all, like, you go in now. Thank you. 
uh, being awake or being asleep, you know. Yeah. And it's sort of, I think I'm awake at this period, but um, I'm, I'm not real. But still not awake to go on, uh, just put a, you know, um, so, but I think, I'll, you know, in those terms, awake or asleep, I'll, I've been asleep about two years, you know. Do you feel that artists work best when they have a lot of stress and strain placed? Do you think that that's when they turn out the most creative uh, uh, works?
Were you just thinking, oh, I just heard that song a second ago? Well, yes, you did. <laughs> I have um, Black Lines, Din Skies, Tyler Sinclair here with me. He just performed that song that you heard in the back of that promo spot live for us, which is pretty rad. How are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> That's good. Hey, um, we were just talking. Um, well, actually, I was talking to someone who shall be re- remain unnamed that the beginning of that set you just played for us had a clip that was on WMSE radio um, yeah. last Friday. Last Friday. Do you want to explain <laughs> what what you used to lead off your song for the first set? So from what I understand, um, the DJ who was in the station uh, meant to play, uh, I think it was a cassette tape of... Uh, I think it was an interview of John Lennon from 1974, Menominee Falls Radio. Uh, not totally familiar with the exact format of the show, uh, but the tape he was supposed to play wasn't working, so we had like a backup uh, copy that sounded the way it did. Uh, and you know, I was driving around and heard it, and I, yeah, I just kind of stopped what I was doing. I was like, this this is grabbing my attention right now. Um, and then, you know, went back to the archives, listened to it and grabbed all the, uh, parts that seemed to, uh, give me the creeps. And hopefully I was able to convey that. Okay. And that was Dewey Gill who aired that on Friday. Correct. That's, that's awesome. So you, do you work like that very often where you're inspired by something you hear and try to seek it out and use it? Not really. (laughs) I, 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 I wish I had some sort of, uh, you know, reason for what I do, but it's, I'm a creature of necessity and not of habit, so. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so I feel like, you know, from my perspective, you're pretty young in a really storied scene here in Milwaukee, especially. Sure. Uh, when did you first become aware of Milwaukee's, like, electronic-based scene? Because it's been around for a long time. Yeah but it just kind of comes into no- notoriety and spurts. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it'll have uh, its waves. Absolutely. Um, well, the first time I was aware of it, um, it's actually tied into the uh, song of choice I'm playing tonight. Um, you know, growing up, I uh, had a pretty musical upbringing, went to uh, a uh, elementary school that specialized in music technology. And at the time, it was kind of like, you know, my path has been chosen, right? So... Uh, you know, fast forward a few years as a uh, early teen, you know, modifying video game systems, really just wanted to make video game music and didn't know how, you know, we didn't have the internet like we have now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just kind of making these tapes of, uh, you know, remixed Metroid theme by using a game genie. I don't expect three quarters of your audience to know what that means, but that's just what I did. And, uh, you know, entered high school maybe a little bit before that. Uh, and I heard this one morning uh, the song Skele Chairs by Dormouse. It was on MSC. There was a DJ who played it at like 7 in the morning. And uh, you know, I was somewhere on the south side, I don't know, and just going to some free clinic or something. I'm sure I was sick. But uh, it it was... I I actually had to postpone the, you know, the actual meeting or whatever, the, the appointment. And... Uh, because I'd never heard anything like it before. And then the DJ announced, you know, I was local, you know, DJ Dormouse or whatever. Um, and it it blew my mind. I was like, wow, okay, so there are people doing this, you know, not just in general, but locally. And did a little more research, went to a few more shows, whatever, and then realized, like, the magnitude of what we had here. Uh, and the effects are, you know, when I'm selling records overseas they're like oh you're from milwaukee that's that's amazing and uh you know to me it's just like yeah i've always i've always lived here you know but it you you're kind of re-reminded of the scene uh as it were and as it should be so that's my that's my story (laughs) that's cool i honestly had no idea there was Number one, you're blowing my mind that there was a school that you attended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's or I, you attended. Like, was it your parents that enrolled you, or was it something that you were? Honestly, it was. Uh, it was a neighborhood school. Wow. You know, I mean, my my father was big into music. He was in a few, you know, punk bands in Milwaukee uh, in the late '70s, early '80s. Uh, mother, she's a ballerina for 
a brief moment. And uh, yeah, it was just one of those weird situations where, you know, oh, it's a local school and we were down with, you know, what they're trying to push these children. And so um, it was, it, it turned out to be like this really fantastic thing too, because a lot of the teachers embraced um, tape trading in the hallways. And at the time, like throughout the late 80s, early 90s, there was so much happening both with technology and electronic music that we would study it, uh, you know, not formally, uh, but, you know, the music teacher, hey, would you bring in? And it's like, oh, yeah, I brought in this Juan Atkins cassette tape that I, you know, got from Lord knows where I don't even remember, where I'd bring in, you know, like these weird Metroid glitch remixes on cassettes and stuff. And we would we would listen to them and analyze and. Uh, you know, one of my earliest memories of grade school was having a uh, computer with it was like 35 keyboards hooked up to it via MIDI. And that was our orchestra class. You know, that was we, we had a separate orchestra, but like that is that was the priority. That was like the meat and potatoes of that school. So so it's been in your world for a long, long time. It, yeah. My like I said, my path has been chosen. I, it's, <laughs> I, I didn't really yeah. have any other choice honestly that's amazing i don't know if i've met anyone like that I, like in I, the electronic realm i hope is. not <laughs> <laughs> that's so great so when did you start you know branching off into being a label owner runner proprietor um you know because uh, you were a creator for so long yeah i think it was my first midlife crisis uh now i was at the time i had always used this uh descriptor on cassette tapes you know like radio graffiti or whatever and it just kind of stuck uh but it wasn't until about 10 years ago that i started to take it seriously i was laid off it was like the uh you know like the big i don't know recession or whatever that we had and i was given a severance and so i took the severance and i was like well you know i'm not a drug dealer i don't have rich parents uh i'll take this money from you know the people who just let me go and i'll just start releasing vinyl because you know, what else am I going to do? And uh, it kind of caught on, um, which I'm still kind of blown away by um, because it's it's not approachable. It's very uh, uncompromising. And, you know, it's not the hardest electronic music out there by a long shot, but, um, you know, people just kind of liked what was going on. And so I had to do a second one and then I had to do a third one and now I have to do an 18th one you know but I enjoy it um so I think that's when I kind of knew like okay I, I might be on to something here well yeah now you can't stop <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, no better, for better or worse yeah um so you know I feel like I want to ask a little bit about the video game stuff sure you know we don't have like a ton of time uh, but it's, yeah. I find it really interesting you know that you released were music for was it tracker hero sure yeah so that was a few years ago it was a homebrew game for the amiga line of computers which is this old computer that i'm sure most of my listening audience was born well after the company went out of business um and this um guy programmed it was you know like a guitar hero game uh, but it fit this uh, song format for these old computers. Um, and it was, it's like this weird cross hybrid of uh, the style of music program called a tracker, where you think of like the old piano s scrolls where you see the notes, like um, it, it's basically that in digital form and it gives you like a lot of control over what you're doing. Um, so this person kind of mashed the two things together and I heard about it and I was like, um, I would love to contribute something and just make something so hard to play and so difficult um, because my music has been known to be really fast. And he was like, yeah, let's let's do this. Well, it was so fast that it didn't adhere to the original format. So I had to go back, re kind of program things. And oddly enough, I didn't realize this until you know, m multiple years later, um, particular songs... Uh, that I've done have actually caught on with people who record themselves on YouTube and play a similar type of game um, on their iPad. And it's kind of become this sort of known thing where it's like, oh yeah, you know, if you get Tyler's tracks, 
you know, they're usually really, really difficult. And if you can master those, you're the best at this game. You know, it's, I'm like, okay, mission accomplished. Now I got to write something faster. So, but yeah, that's kind of the long and short of that. So it's amazing. Uh, you also speaking of the Amiga, mm -hmm. uh, you also had um, either your music or shots of yourself <laughs> in a documentary in, about the Amiga. Correct. Yeah, yeah various states of inebriation. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it something that you recommend people check out if they're uh, curious it, about? The, the documentary, yeah, check it out. If you know when I'm going to be on it, you could skip over that part. Please <laughs> okay. do, actually. I, oh. I'd appreciate that. All right, all right. Yeah. Enough said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, uh, you know, I was invited to go play a 8-bit um, music festival. Um, wow, it's quite a while ago now. And, um, yeah, you know, I... One of those things where the whole week was a blur, and uh, it was this really amazing experience. And you know, some of the people there just happened to be uh, filming a documentary on the computer that I use, and they saw photos and saw me play live, and they're like, "What? What is this? You know, why? What?" <laughs> and so, you know, they documented some of it. And I'm sure all of it didn't make any sense. It still doesn't. I, I try not to watch that but <laughs> okay, um okay. yeah it's that's basically what that is but that computer is basically my tool of choice and i was lucky enough to find it early on so cool um we could talk for a long time about you know black lines and sky your project and radio sure. graffiti yeah, yeah. but i want to um hone in real quick on the event to come that's mm -hmm. happening at club garibaldi's on the 9th yeah. um it is definitely uh really exciting you have the aforementioned dormouse coming back yeah. and all that is yeah. this uh event it's not only a label showcase but i feel like it's also um correlated to melt and like sure. everything kind of yeah. you know a little bit of a prop up for the milwaukee electronic music scene yeah uh tell us a little bit about how you got this particular event together um so um you know many years ago um there was some cross pollination between Melt and Radio Graffiti for you know, quite a while, and um, over the years, you know, Melt went on to become this go-to, you know, experimental electronic event, um, and you know, they they happen sporadically, but they're always worthwhile. And um, I just kind of felt um, recently that you know, hey, maybe uh, I should sort of resurrect this idea of doing another electronic event, um, but kind of have it affiliated with the label and these other things I happen to be affiliated with and uh, just try to bring it all together and you know see if anyone kind of shares the same excitement that I do about the show and various other uh, you know affiliations. And you know, it's, it's just, I don't know, I had an idea and I just had a lot of free time and yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I wish I had like a some elaborate answer to that, but I just no. I, I did it because I wanted to and it's fun. That's cool. And yeah. uh, can you tell us who's all part of the event? So we are. Uh, there are a lot of people, and there's a flyer right here. Um, so yeah, people playing. Um, myself, Hot Science, the Demix, um, local artists. Um, you know, the DMX runs the Melt event. Um, we have Null Sleep from New York City. And, uh, you know, he was one of the people who contacted me to play the festival, the Blip Festival. Um, Dormouse, obviously. And, uh, yeah, it's just one of these really, really cool shows. Uh, CCDM, been a good friend of mine for a while, a fellow Amiga computer user. And, um, you know, him and I, we've battled, we've had Amiga battles, if that makes any sense to anyone. Um, and, you know, it's basically like sound clash events. So I thought like, hey, let's, let's get back out here and, and play in Milwaukee. Um, Dan over at Rushmore thought it was a really, really cool idea. Um, and the uh, local DIY modular synth store um, that I'm affiliated with is actually right across the street from Rushmore. So, you know, the more I started talking to people about this, everyone's like really amped on it and it kind of all came together and, you know, we'll see if, uh, 
we'll see if everything's still standing afterward. <laughs> so okay, you might shake the shake the bricks out of Club Garibaldi <laughs> <laughs> walls. Some old bricks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to get you back out to the studio and play another set. You've got another. Uh, <laughs> long jam for us. <laughs> uh, it's about five minutes, but I'm going to assume that you know five minutes is pretty much all anyone's going to be able to take of what I'm about to play. So, mm. not at all. I think the, the music tonight is perfect for uh, the uh, upcoming holiday tomorrow, the yeah, rainy well, evening, um, the event to come. I, I'm I'm excited to hear what you got next. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to kill any sort of momentum I may have had during the first portion. So, <laughs> Not at all. I know it's hard to jump back into that short set, so yeah. I'll let you get all warmed up. And awesome. in, in the meantime, I'm going to send uh, Tyler back out to the studio, and uh, I'm going to play a little message about that event, and we'll get right back into the studio in just one moment here on WMSE. Please go to WMSE.org. All right. We're sending back out to the Bob and Jeannie Freeman live performance studio. We bring you the music of Black Lines at Dent Sky on WMSC's Local Live. Milwaukee is heating up. An explosion of condos. Condo. Fun, fashionable. <laughs> 19 shootings in just five days. It's a story we've heard before. We're a little bit behind compared to some other cities. We're on our way. Yeah, let's talk about who chooses these downtown locations. Fun, trendy, young. It's the people. cool people. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, beautiful. I mean, and, and I love that you guys use drones. I can't believe this is happening. Ten people shot and killed in this city in just the last week. Well, I think the most important thing is view. You have everything from dining to shopping to culture to the lakefront to culture to different trails to different activities to culture to... 84 murders so far this year. The downtown market is hot right now. Your family and friends will love the light show, dance, phone, and the VIP room. <laughs> Amenities, proximity to restaurants, bars, outdoor bar, indoor bar, 6 15-inch TVs, you know, it just goes on and on and on. We're talking to a lot of developers, we encourage them to start building more condos. Gunfire. Waiting for you will be a chilled bottle of Dom Perignon. Deadly crime wave. Gunshots, homicides, poverty, guns, gun crime. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. And you get a very nice glimpse of Lake Michigan.
Bryant back in the studio with Black Lines Din Sky for This Is Your Song. <laughs> <laughs> the the views and opinions of me are not that of the station. So <laughs> All right, all right. Disclaimer. Yep. Um I want to congratulate Aaron from Milwaukee for winning the tickets. Thanks to everyone else who gave a call. Um, had a little bit of a late in response, but that was exciting. So thanks to everyone who uh, expressed excitement over these tickets uh, for the label night showcase on the 9th at Club Garibaldi. Okay, tell me about this this fresh track oh, you brought Oh, boy. In. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to... Uh, look up the name here to make sure I get it right so if you want to maybe kill a few seconds here well I could I could oh could you look at the yeah it's unsolved path of least skeletons yeah so if that doesn't make any sense to you uh listening that I feel bad for you uh no basically so I have really bad analysis paralysis uh and it's only amplified when I have to choose uh favorites and so you know realizing it's devil's night and you know halloween and being on the air and having a show coming up it's there were a lot of variables to consider with what i wanted to choose um so the three songs that i initially really wanted to play were skeleton chairs by dormouse uh because he's playing and because it's you know local technically um the path of least resistance by human league um i just think you know the importance of Human League to modern uh, pop music cannot be overstated. The first two albums are absolutely amazing, and it blows my mind that a lot of that was from the late 70s. Uh, And the third song was the theme to Unsolved Mysteries, which to this day, um, one of the scariest songs I've ever heard in my entire life. And you just combine that with Robert Stack's voice and it's it's total nightmare fuel. Still get goosebumps. Um, huge inspiration um, just because it was so subversive. Um, you know, being a kid and, you know, watching the TV through your hands and hearing this really awesome, uh, you know, 80s synth soundtrack, which I guess is like in fashion now or whatever. Um, it really, really, really visceral. Um and you know i took to facebook and i was like hey everyone i need you to help me choose a song here and it 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 was basically an even split between the three and and uh dormouse chimed in and he was like why don't you do a mega mix and i'm like well thought about it um but i just i don't have time i need to prep whatever and he comes back to me 20 minutes later with what what you're about to hear (laughs) that's a good friend i yeah it's you know what what can i say other than i have no excuse if he was able to whip this up in 20 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, basically, I that was the end of that. He decided for me, and now we're going to play it. So I, That's amazing. I don't know if the sum is greater than the parts, but I think it's pretty amazing that we live during a time when we can make this sort of thing actually happen. So. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dormouse. Yeah, too. yeah seriously. <laughs> thank you. All right, so we're going to play this track. Uh, Dormouse with his uh, Unsolved Path of Least Skeletons radio mix premiering here on WMSC. <laughs> Enjoy. Chainsaw thing. made of human skeleton. Chainsaw finger. Chairs made of human skeleton. Cheers, 
made of human skeleton. Chainsawed fingers and bones, chairs made of human skeleton. <laughs>
We want to thank everyone again for tuning in to tonight's edition of Local Live on WMSC. Local Live is a production of WMSC Radio, recorded and broadcast live from the Bob and Jeannie Freeman Live Performance Studio on the downtown campus of the Milwaukee School of Engineering. And Local Live is produced by me and Cal, Get Better Cal, engineered by Billy Cicerelli, all video by Moleskin Productions. Hospitality tonight for Local Live artists provided by Cedar Teeth Pizza. It can be found online at cedarteeth.com. Anodyne Coffee, who can be found online at anodynecoffee.com. And Sprecher Brewing Company, more info at sprecherbrewery.com. For upcoming guests and archives of past local live performances, visit wmsc.org. Please tune in again next Tuesday at 6 o'clock for another edition of Local Live with Red Stuff. Um, and also, don't forget, it's the WMSC Fall Membership Drive. Donate if you love Local Live and hearing local music uh, each and every week that really uh, piques your curiosity, gets you out to the shows, uh, throw down some money, and help make it all happen at WMSC.org. We'll see you next week. Uh, Bob Midnight is up next with Midnight Radio. Midnight Radio.